What's going on everybody, C4 here, and today we're going to talk about a very polarizing issue amongst Philadelphia Eagle fans, and we're going to talk about the quarterback situation as we get ready for the playoffs. Now, I am recording this uh, Thursday, so it's a couple days before the Philadelphia Eagles-Dallas Cowboy Week 17 matchup. It's probably coming out on Sunday. I don't know if it's coming out after that game, so I don't know exactly what's going on with Nick Foles and or Nate Sudfeld and their performances, so uh, take that in mind throughout this video. I posed a question on a Twitter. Should the Philadelphia Eagles look to bring in Colin Kaepernick for a tryout? And there was a lot of varying responses. I made sure the keyword in capitalize was a tryout. I know when people see Philadelphia Eagles Colin Kaepernick in the same sense, you're assuming that I'm trying to say the Eagles need to sign Colin Kaepernick right now because if they don't, they don't have a chance in hell of winning the Super Bowl. Colin Kaepernick should be in the NFL, should be a starting quarterback. This is that, this is that, this is that, this is that. No, I said tryout. Just see what he can do. That performance that Nick Foles had against the Oakland Raiders was horrific. It was so bad, I said in an earlier video. I can't even throw that to a mulligan because now it's do or die time and we are looking for the quarterback that can captain this ship. We have a good enough team that as long as our quarterback doesn't turn the ball over and can convert even 50% of his third downs, we should be able, with home field advantage, to be competitive in a playoff scenario. And Nick Foles, that game is not a mulligan. That might have been the worst game I've ever seen a quarterback have in a Philadelphia Eagles uniform. So, we're talking about three quarterbacks that are very polarizing amongst the Philadelphia Eagles. And what quarterback should be the guy in wake of Carson Wentz's ACL injury? God, it hurts every time I bring it up. It just feels bad in my soul. I get it. I feel sick to my stomach. What if, Car you know, I don't want to, you know, we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. Nick Foles, Nate Sudfeld, Colin Kaepernick. This video here is a question to you Philadelphia Eagle fans. Open up a dialogue about what the majority here wants to see the Philadelphia Eagles do. What I think we should do. But first and foremost, we need to know what the three names that we're working with. First up, we're going with the guy that most realistically will be the Eagles quarterback throughout the playoff push. And is their starter right now. That is Nick Foles. Currently this season, we all know Nick Foles has passed. You know, the 27-2 season, you know, eventually getting traded to the Rams, going into that just, I don't know what, what the proper word would be to describe all the good talents that goes under a Jeff Fisher team because we saw with Sean McVay, it's night and day. So, you know, I, I feel like it's unfair to judge Nick Foles' time in L.A. Uh, it really is to say, oh, yeah, he's not that good or anything like that because the Rams team was terrible. It was there. He had no weapons around him. And all in all, it was a Jeff Fisher-led offense. So every, we'll just refer back to what he's done this year. He's still 2-0. He has 500 passing yards, 5 touchdowns, and 1 pick. Just looking at the games against the Giants and the Raiders. That's not bad. You look at that and you say, alright, you know, that's as, you know, maybe good as, say, Case Keenum's been able to play from a box score standpoint. But the game against the Giants and the game against the Raiders could not have been polar opposites. Both teams, the Giants and the Raiders, have similarly bad defenses. Struggle in the secondary. So I can't explain what went wrong with Nick Foles against the Raiders personally. Uh, no one really on the offense had a good game. Offensive line did not play particularly well. The run game couldn't get going. The wide receivers couldn't get separation. And when they did, they would drop the ball. But ultimately, the most... You know, the, the cause and effect of all those issues was Nick Foles was having a horrific, absolutely Mark Sanchez, friggin' Matt Barkley quality of a game. And luckily enough, he only threw that one set, one interception. There could have been another pick six. There could have been three picks on the day. One of those was for sure a drop pick six. So, you know, I personally, like I said at the very beginning, I, you know, you want to throw this up as a mulligan. You want to look at positive and see the game against the Giants and say, you know what? We saw what he could do against the Giants. He just needs to, you know, he got to be in the zone. It was, it was an off day. But that was such a bad off day. I'm kind of, you know, I'm not a knee jerker. I'm not a knee jerk Eagle fan. All you guys that have been watching my videos for I don't know how many years, seven years now I've been talking about the Eagles, I do not make knee-jerk re knee reactions when I talk about my Philadelphia Eagles, but that game was that bad, he is on shaky ice, and I believe we should really exhaust all options to make sure that we put ourselves in the best opportunity to win some ball games. So that is Dick Foles, now looking at Nate Sudfeld, he was a six-round draft pick out of Indiana uh, from the Washington Redskins, and ended up getting cut there. Uh, got picked up by the Philadelphia Eagles. At his time in Indiana, 7,900 passing yards, 61 touchdowns, 20 picks. So from a college stat standpoint, that's pretty damn good. Uh, according to Frank Reich, he has been turning heads in practice. He got a lot of compliments because he was a scout team quarterback 
for a lot of the season from uh, Eagles starters. I think Malcolm Jenkins, Chris Long, guys like that had positive words to say. And obviously he was good enough that the Eagles signed him to the final 53 so teams around the league wouldn't poach him off their practice squad. So that, you know, kind of goes to say that he's getting respect around the league. There's, you know, among scouts and stuff like that and team personnel, Nate Sudfeld is a guy, you know, a coveted backup quarterback with upside. So when I look at Nate Sudfeld, what we are going to see or hopefully saw against the Dallas Cowboys was, you know, a guy, we just need a captain, oh captain, just steer the ship. You don't need to play like Carson Wentz. It'd be nice if Nate Sudfeld somehow, someway, or Nick Foles somehow, someway could constantly just, you know, seamlessly take over for Carson Wentz and where we left off. It's not going to happen. Looking at this team, you just need to not turn the ball over. You need to hand the ball up clean. You need to be able to get this, you know, handle the snap from our center. Holy God, against the Raiders. Everything like, you know, a third of the snaps from Kelsey and Foles were fumbled. Wasn't helping him out any. So I don't know. I don't know how high, you know, probably at some point after this video, I'll have my player grades and uh, I'll have a better opinion of how I feel about Nate Sudfeld. It's probably going to be, uh, like I said, we're not, uh, you know, I'm not going to pull a C fo fo 5 and overreact about anything. But you never know. Nate Sudfeld somehow pulls a Nick Foles. What he did against the Giants, those three or four touchdowns against the Cowboys, maybe I'll be playing a little bit different of a tune. But until then, you know, there's a massive question mark about Nate Sudfeld, especially if you want to try to get in the conversation of what quarterback is going to lead the Philadelphia Eagles. Nate Sudfeld's never, <laughs> as of this video, he's never completed a pass in the NFL. And having that be your guy in the playoffs, unless it's some storybook movie ending, it's probably not going to work out well for you. So that leaves you with the most polarizing player in the NFL that's not even rostered, Colin Kaepernick. When you look at the pros, you look at the minuses from Colin Kaepernick, you know, again, referring to the, the opening question of this video, should the Eagles bring in Colin Kaepernick for a triumph? You don't give him a contract off the street. You don't go, you know, like half the people out here that don't think before they tweet saying, oh, we, you know, he's going to be the guy. We got to bring him right now. We can't be racist. We need to bring in Colin Kaepernick. He's the guy that can lead us to the Super Bowl in the promised land. I mean, looking at his resume, you know, it's is not that far off of Nick Foles, I will say that. Uh, playoff experience, he has that. He's 4-2 in the playoffs, whereas Nick Foles is 0-1. Um, he's ideal for what the Philadelphia Eagles have at the offensive line. What Carson Wentz was able to do, he's able to scramble. He was able to make plays with his feet. That's kind of compensated the injuries and the loss of Jason Peters. Nick Foles just can't do that. Nate Sudfeld, you know, again, a big, long, rangy, God-fearing quarterback. So he's not going to do too much if the, if the play breaks down. But Colin Kaepernick can make plays with his feet. And that would be an added bonus to a quarterback behind this offensive line. Especially the left-hand side with Big V and Warmack and stuff like that. We're not at 100%. And then when you look at his stats in 2016, outside of his win-loss, it wasn't terrible. He was 1-10, which is horrific. But he had 2,200 passing yards, 16 touchdowns, 4 interceptions to go along with 470 rushing yards and 2 rushing touchdowns. So, I mean, you know, from a player prospect standpoint... I would still probably edge it to Nick Foles, but it's very close, man. Colin Kaepernick and Nick Foles are right, I would say, in the same tier in terms of playmaking ability and just, you know, as a quarterback and their established track records. But, I mean, you get the media freak circus with Colin Kaepernick. I personally have watched a lot of Colin Kaepernick games, not when the Niners were good, when the Niners were bad. I have a buddy that's a Niner fan, so I, you know, I watched an unhealthy amount of uncompetitive Niner games with Colin Kaepernick as a quarterback. And, you know, I think that just gives me a little bit better than just, you know, your standard armchair panelist here that's just looking at the box score. I've seen a bunch of Colin Kaepernick games. I would say those stat lines, you look at 16 and 4, you're going, man, that's pretty good. Uh, like, a lot of garbage time plays and stuff like that, like Blake Bortles type numbers. It's still not bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to discredit what he's done. But I, I still believe he's not that good of a quarterback. That's a, there's a reason why he's not rostered in the NFL, and I don't only believe it's because of the take a knee thing. Uh, it's it's a, it's a Tebow effect, you know. The off field, you have to deal with all that stuff in excess of a guy that's you know gotta want to get paid decent money, and you know you don't know what the result is gonna be. But for the Philadelphia Eagles, when you look at the way Nick Foles played, and we don't know how he played against the Dallas Cowboys yet, even if he does, we don't even know if he's gonna play. I assume they're gonna play. They better play his ass, like I said in an earlier video for the hype video. At least three drives. And if he sucks in those first three drives, you play him for the whole goddamn game because he needs to get good reps under his belt. We can't go into the playoffs with the last couple drives that Nick Foles has had uh, and going into like a two-week layoff being what happened against the Raiders. If we struggle against the Cowboys, hell yeah, bring Colin Kaepernick in for a tryout. See what he can do. You never know. You need to take a gamble because if we struggle against the Cowboys, we do not have a hope in hell of winning a playoff game. I, 
I'm going to be, you know, I want to be the most optimistic football fan. I want to be the most any given Sunday, any team can win. I want to be a we can rely on the run game and the defense can bail us out. If Nick Foles has another stinker if he plays against Dallas, based off of what happened against Oakland, I think it would be an injustice not to see what Colin Kaepernick could offer to this Eagles team. And I know it's a topic that divides a lot of people. I know there's people that watch my videos, that follow me on Twitter and stuff, that are military family, they're military and themselves, that take great offense to what Colin Kaepernick's doing. I completely understand that. I'm, I'm Canadian. I have no real take in the matter of Colin Kaepernick. I can't pick sides because literally I, my voice means nothing. But when you bring it down to football, when you, you forget about all the off the field stuff and you look at it as a football scenario, if Nick Foles does not show anything against Dallas, you got to see what can happen. If we could throw that Hail Mary to Colin Kaepernick to lead this team to whatever we're going to go, if he can steer this ship, I think it would be incredibly unfair to the fan base to just see. Just let us know. Have Colin Kaepernick in for a tryout. If Nick Foles sucks, I'm, I'm saying there's going to be a chance Nick Foles has a, you know, a Giants caliber game and how much time he plays against the Cowboys and all is fine. We just, we then we can now verify that maybe the Raiders game's a mulligan and let's just hope the guy that's had the playbook all year is going to be fine. But I still feel like if Nick Foles struggles, take the Hail Mary with Colin Kaepernick. Doesn't know the plays, doesn't know the offense, has no chemistry whatsoever. But I would rather go with the Hail Mary option, the chance, than going with Nick Foles and have him just struggle on third down. Have him just scrambling the worst, oh my god, the worst scrambling quarterback in football. Looks like Bambi on ice. So let me know what you guys think about this issue. Like I said, I understand it's incredibly polarizing. It's, um, I'm not taking sides on the issue. Like I said, man, I, you know, the whole take a knee, people that think he should, and then you have the people that think they shouldn't. Like I said, I have no, I have no dog in the fight because, you know, it doesn't really relate. It's not relatable to me. So... What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. But here's hoping after this video, you know, Nick Foles had a fine game against the Cowboys and we're not hitting the panic button. If not, you can panic in the comments. If this is your first time stopping by. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace.